So I don't know in what market you are in, but you may think that that doesn't make sense. You say, I'm not a software company, I'm in production, I'm in agriculture. So don't think this way. You need to think like a software company because now we have FinTech, CleanTech, AgriTech, and all these things that are kind of saying that you need to be a tech company, a software company to succeed in your market. I'm Steve Johnston, a serial entrepreneur, and I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs to succeed. And I'm very excited to use this channel to share all my valuable resources with you to help you reach your goal. Come and join me. Let's work together and we'll get your digital transformation to success. So to survive as a company, you need to think like a software company. What does that mean is in terms of the strategy. So everything you do, every project you are kickstarting, you need to think about, okay, can I use a tool? Can I use a software? So don't start with a spreadsheet. You can start with a piece of paper, but make sure that at one point you're going to be something online and especially on the cloud. You need to think this way. You need to make sure that you are moving toward that step. If you don't have this that thing, I mean, you're going to be behind everybody because there is a company in your market that will, that will jump in and be very software strategic and it will beat you up very quickly. So don't think that the way we do things today is going to be the way in five years, 10 years. You know, with AI is changing a lot. Make sure that for every strategy, every new project, you think what type of software solution can bring. Software is very broad. Secondly, leverage technology. So once you have a new solution or the solution you have, make sure you're taking advantage of it. And you say, okay, that, um, you may have like five different software in your organizations, but are you really using them appropriately, efficiently? Do they do these uh, software are talking to each other? So what do you do with those? Make sure that every single time you have a new initiative, a new idea that you're bringing and leveraging the te technology you have, or the technology that you should, you should acquire to move to the next step. And always think about that. Think like a software company. And quality data. So once you have selected your tools and you are leveraging the technology of these tools, you need to make sure that you are gathering good data, good quality data. This is what is going to bring you business intelligence. And this is why people can say, oh, those are gadgets. I mean, have you tools that are gadgets, uh, which in fact, you know, are not gadgets. You can gather a lot of and very useful information that you put that together and you can have like dashboards and business intelligence tools helping you to uh, understand all these things and interpret them to give you some good data. So we're going to do videos about business intelligence, but here quality data, you make sure that on day one of a new tool or the actual tool you have, make sure you, you get them. Even if you don't use them right away, make sure that you're gathering that somewhere uh, in the good order with quality data and make sure they are cleaned up, make sure they are entered properly right at the beginning. If you think like a software company, you think about automation, obviously. So you need to automate your processes. First of all, before automating any processes, you need to understand them. If you want to optimize them, Say, so how do you, where do you start? You need to go through and look at your core process. And what I mean the core process is, what is the revenue stream that you have? And what is the, pro the main revenue stream, your cash cow? And look at what I call, or we call in the market, quote to cash process. You look from the beginning. So when you're getting the order until you deliver your product or your services. So what are all the steps in there? And we'll do a video about this uh, process mapping in a very simple manner. So, but if you understand all these steps, you'll be able to know where the inefficiencies are, where you have gaps and where the user or customer experience is wrong and very bad. You can improve that, you can optimize it. And while you do that and you know all these steps, you can gather data in all these things. And obviously you do that with technology process and people after ever having strategized about it. So it's all these things are linked and intertwined together. And obviously, you need to have a customer focus. Customer experience is key. And many, many solutions, many companies are bringing, are coming with new ideas and new uh, user interface and very nice processes that are very good, very familiar. So don't think that people understand everything when they go and use your solution. It could be agriculture, it could be clean tech, fintech, but 
customer focus in, is everything. So don't take those things just for the IT team. You need to select them and optimize processes, gathering data to help the customer. And here on the quality data with the business intelligence, you'll understand more about the task, but also about the customers. And knowing more the customers will bring you a very high level of differentiator in your market. That's going to be uh, very good for your business. So customer focus is, as you know, very, very, very important. And also keep in mind that when you select a tool, obviously I would say preferably on the cloud, you can increase the collaboration within your company, but also with external stakeholders, could be suppliers, it could be even the customers themselves that you have forums or anything that you're gather, gathering information from them for business intelligence to serve them better and optimize the processes to serve them even better. So collaboration should be key as well. And usually with collaboration, which is implicit, is integration. You need to have all these tools fully integrated to each other and talking to each other and passing the data, the information from one tool to another, to another. So when you have a department, who, for example, uh, is at the beginning of the chain, they enter information about the customer or a product and that information should be carried to the next um, department or person, whatever the size, until you get to the end. So all this information is gathered for good quality data, for business intelligence, uh, so we talk about collaboration. So I'll make a quick summary, but as you can see, all these things are intertwined, as I said. So you select the software on day one that's going to help you to resolve an issue or improve an aspect of your business. You leverage that technology with the other technologies you already have in your business. You make sure that you are gathering good quality data that's going to help you to serve the customer and by automating certain things for staff and certain things for the customers, you are helping everything. And having the right tool and the right strategy, with you can implement a better collaboration, better communication, and how you do that with cross-functional team in your organization. So watch my video about how to break silos, and you'll see uh, the advantages of creating cross-functional teams. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe below and set up the notifications. I'm on a mission to help entrepreneurs to be successful in their transformation. Stay tuned for more videos and don't forget to comment below with your ideas or any topics you'd like me to discuss for you.